welcome back dear learners for the past 3 weeks we have tried to understand what model un is how it functions and how one can participate in it this week let us explore the age old question of how to join a model un conference and try to understand various things one should keep in mind before joining it we will explore this question through the perspective of three of the most important actors of a committee namely the delegate the committee dais and the members of the international press In this video let us start with the nucleus of the committee the delegate recalling from our previous video segments a delegate is a participant in a model given simulation who represents a portfolio which can be an individual a country or an organization a delegate is responsible for participating in the committee debate and diplomatically arrive at a set of solutions and suggestions on behalf of their committee one can join a model given conference as a delegate in two ways One way is when your school or college organizes a model UN conference. Here, one can register directly and participate. The second is the external model UN, when another school, college, or organization hosts a model UN conference, either on an online platform or in an offline setting. One can generally register in such conferences by registering or applying through the online portals and platforms of the organization. These portals cater to different delegates. through the conference's social media handles on Instagram or Facebook these handles also contain information about the parent organization the committee dais members the secretariat the committees and their respective agendas among others make sure to check these agendas at hand and the committee requirements before registering most of the model un conferences are for profit and have an entry fee that is aimed to instill a sense of commitment and seriousness among the delegates to participate and also to create a sense of incentive by rewarding the best performers in an online mode this fee starts at 200 rupees or 3 dollars and can go up to 500 rupees or around 7 dollars in the offline mode this cost increases starting from 1500 rupees or 20 dollars to almost 50000 rupees or 650 dollars this money goes to the payment of the committee dais members making up certificates prize money for winners social media advertising or in case of offline events to the event venue booking or other related amenities such as delegate accommodation and food there are many other model event conferences which are organized free of cost and are focused on the core aspect of a model event conference more than the glamour associated with these events here the delegate seriousness comes mainly from the incentives that are given to them These incentives vary from conference to conference where some conferences reward their best participants by promoting them to the secretariat and the committee dais in the future editions some conferences award them with prize money These awards are given to the top 3 participants from each committee and are decided by the committee dais members based on a marking rubric that varies from procedure to procedure depending on the expectations of the conference from the participant These awards are the best delegate the high commendation and the special mention some conferences also mention the delegates in their addresses for their performance which is referred to as a verbal mention it is important to remember that although the core goal of the awards is to provide an incentive for the delegates to perform the core motive behind these awards is to honor the participants for their hard work and dedication in representing their portfolios thus a delegate should only be motivated to work hard by these awards but not get carried away by them instead a delegate should focus on keeping one's portfolio relevant in the committee and represent one's portfolio in the most accurate way possible to be worthy of an award now that we have explored the registration part please pause the video for 2 minutes and respond to the given scenario think about possible factors a delegate should consider while applying for a model un conference and note down your response your possible responses could be the committee preference the agenda the portfolio the conference and the committee dais these points are extremely important while applying for a model given conference and can determine the amount of learning a delegate can achieve through these conferences now let us explore each of these points more elaborately the committee preference based on all that we have discussed in the second week model given conferences operate through five kinds of committees first is the united nations committee or the unc which are model un committees that simulate real un organs and committees 
and have agendas that reflect contemporary events and issues. The second is the intergovernmental committees or the IECs, which are committees that simulate various intergovernmental organizations from around the world and have regional contemporary agendas. Following this are the third kind of committees, which are the national parliamentary committees or the NPCs. These are the organizations that simulate national parliaments or organizations from a particular nation and focus on contemporary agendas that are relevant to the particular nation or region. Here, delegates generally represent individuals or organizations and not countries. Following this, the historical simulation committees or the HSCs from the fourth kind of model UN committee that simulates historical events from the past and operates with freeze dates as discussed earlier in this course. These committees can be any organization under the UNC, IGC or the NPC but with the agendas from the past events or incidents and the portfolios reflecting the same. The fifth kind of committee are the Crisis Simulation Committee or the CSC which is the final kind of committee in a model UN conference that can be a UNC, IGC, NPC or a HSC and focuses on generalized agendas that are introduced and are updated with constant crisis. A crisis can be anything from a terrorist attack to a kidnapping or a natural disaster that adversely affect the agenda and forces the participants to think on their feet. An agenda in a CSC is a more generalized topic on which delegates prepare like an environmental crisis, US-China trade war or the COVID pandemic. If the agenda is somewhere from the past, then just like the HSC, there will be a freeze date and whatever happens after the freeze date will be introduced by the committee dais members in the form of crisis updates. These updates are generally reflective of the reality but are different from the real timeline of a historical event. In a contemporary or futuristic agenda, the CSC operates primarily based on crisis updates that are caused by the actions of other delegates or are inspired by similar events from the past. In a CSC, Delegates have a unique power to take individual action independently in the form of directives. We have explored directives in our previous segments and it's important to note that it is these directives that give a committee a direction and a flow in a crisis setting. It is important that one selects their committees that actually interest them. This would not only help establish an emotional connect between the delegate and the committee, but would also help them adapt and understand the committee's role and their responsibilities beforehand and make sure to model their speeches, solutions, arguments and directives on what the committee can legally achieve. If you are interested in history, HSC is one of the core committees that you can target. If you are interested in something like human rights or social service, even HRC is your committee of choice and so on. One should understand the committee as a conference offers beforehand and choose one's committee depending mainly on one's skill and interest in order to ensure a great learning experience. The agenda of a committee directs everything a delegate can say or do in a conference and thus directs all the learning that occurs in a committee for a participant. Keeping this in mind, let us try to understand various types of agendas a model UN conference has. Before proceeding, it's important to note that a committee can have two or more agendas depending on the conference and often the themes of these agendas are similar, like a natural disaster and a climate crisis. The first type of agenda is a general agenda, which is a very broad topic that the committee aims to discuss and resolve. These are seen mainly in crisis committees or committees with high number of delegates such as the UNGA allowing the views of as many members as possible to be considered for the discussion of the agenda, thus covering various aspects of it. Example of this can be discussing international narcotic trade or human rights violations in developing countries. Both of these agendas are broad and general, covering various issues in various continents and trying to come up with mutually agreeable solutions in the end. The second type of agendas are specific agendas which are focused on a particular region or a specific type of niche under a general international issue, the like human rights violations during Russia-Ukraine war or the Sudan crisis. These agendas are more common type of specific agendas which are adopted by all types of committees from UNCs, IGCs, CSCs, NPCs or HSCs. These specific nature of agendas allows these committees to focus more on in-depth discussion of the agenda and allows the committees with smaller number of delegates such as the UNSC to come up with a realistic solution through diplomacy and negotiation. 
The third type is a historical agenda which is basically an agenda based on event of the past with a freeze date. These agendas are followed in HSCs and CSCs and can be both general or specific in nature. The research for these agendas need to be history focused and would also depend on a delegate's ability to interpret historical scenarios with respect to the freeze dates. In the case of crisis committee, a delegate's ability to make a realistic and situational decision in the form of directives is also something that is very important. Considering different types of agendas, it's important to note that a delegate should primarily focus on choosing an agenda that is inclined towards their curiosity as this would help the delegate successfully accomplish the long drawn out task of extensive research for a conference. Among other things, a delegate should keep in mind the relationship between the committee and the agenda. If your topic of interest is discussing COVID crisis and if the committee is UN ECOSOC, then your research and committee powers can take the committee into discussing more about the socio-economic impact of COVID. Whereas, if your committee is WHO, then you get a chance to form a resolution that is based on healthcare policy. Through this example, it is vital to observe and understand the importance of choosing the right committee agenda combination for your conference. As you might like the committee at hand, but the agenda might be not of your interests. Similarly, you might like an agenda, but the committee of your choice might not have the adequate role and responsibility to cater to the aspect of the agenda that you are interested in. For the more experienced delegates, it's important that they come out of their comfort zone and experience the committees that are complex for them and they have not explored in the past. And in this way, they will not only be better in their research, but also develop confidence of negotiating in different settings. In a model UN conference, a participant gets an opportunity to select one's portfolio during the registration process, where the applicant has to choose about three portfolios from the provided committee matrix and arrange them according to their preferences. Keeping this in mind, let us categorize portfolios and try to understand their importance in learning of a participant. The first kind of portfolio is the indifferent portfolio that has nations and individuals that are not directly impacted by the agenda at hand or the committee's role in the conference. Example of this can be South Africa and UNSC while discussing Russia-Ukraine conflict. Such portfolios are given to delegates with low experience and help them to freely contribute to the discussion and the resolution alike without the additional job of defending themselves from allegations related to the agenda or having to worry about the breaching of a complex point in their foreign policy or portfolio's policy with the statement or a move. Now, this role of the portfolio doesn't depend on the agenda alone but also on the committee. For example, if it is the ECOSOC that discusses this agenda, each country that is affected by sanctions on Russia will not be the tertiary portfolio anymore and instead will come under those indirectly affected by the agenda. The next kind is the indirect portfolio, that is the tier 2 kind of portfolio which affects the agenda indirectly. An example of this can be Japan while discussing the effects of tsunami in Sumatra in a UNGA session since Japan has a long history of natural disasters and can bring valuable points to the table during the discussion. Another example of this can be India during UNSC discussion of the Russia-Ukraine crisis due to India's geopolitical and historical relations to Russia. This kind of portfolio will allow the delegates a level of natural attention and a value without directly being implicated to the issue at hand and is given to delegates with moderate experience. The final kind of portfolio is made up of portfolios that are directly involved and are directly impacted by the agenda. Example of this can be Great Britain in the League of Nations simulation with a World War II agenda. These portfolios are given to highly experienced delegates who have to both express their strong views on the issue at hand and defend their portfolios against the allegations and defend their views on the agenda. Allotting these portfolios to experienced delegates would also help the committee experience realistic debate and proceed the committee in a good direction. Veto power nations of the UNSC, namely USA, UK, China, Russia and France are also considered to be directly impacted portfolios irrespective of the agenda under the UNSC setting. This is owing to the veto power of these portfolios 
that can keep them and their views central to the outcome of the committee. A good and well reputed conference is vital for the participants to learn, gain authentic and relevant experience and build a strong network while gaining exposure to the people from different backgrounds. A certificate from a reputed conference is also considered more authentic than a certificate from a not so well reputed conference by educational and professional institutions all over the world. The main quality of a well reputed conference is firstly the conference's parent organization. These organizations include schools, universities, research centers or student groups and among these generally the university organized conferences are seen as more competitive and productive due to their carefully selected committee dais members and their participants who have a moderate to high experience level on an average. Student led groups are frequently a recent phenomena and are ranked at the least authentic conferences due to their lack of strong monitoring systems both in terms of the organization and the delegate participation however there are really well reputed student led organizations of model un all over the world such as the iim un and not all college or school organized model un conferences are considered productive and authentic and it depends mainly on a delegate's experience in the conference another important aspect of a good conference is also their adherence to the rules of procedures conferences that select and follow rules of procedures authentically are considered to be more productive conferences if the right rules of procedures brings a sense of decorum and realism to the simulation the selection and implementation of a suitable rop gives the delegate a chance to express themselves better and enhance different skill sets through a model un conference a committee dais is made up of highly experienced ex delegates who have experienced being part of many conferences with a similar rop to the present conference committee dais members with such high experience and interest should be carefully selected by conference in order to ensure a great learning experience for the delegates a great committee dais can be described by a quote as someone who speaks less but when does the whole committee stops and listens A good committee dais is made up of members who believes in the delegate's ability to resolve the committee agenda effectively and should keep a non-interference stance and moderate the debate by helping the committee or interpreting the rules of procedures according to the needs of the committee and learning of the delegates. Moving forward, we will be discussing the role of the committee dais more in detail, but it's important to note that without a good committee dais bench the committees irrespective of their conference and the agenda cannot provide a good learning experience for the delegates a good committee dais members not only ensures the committee is guided in the right direction but also understands the importance of giving space to delegates for them to utilize learn and practice their skills and make the conference a great learning experience for all the participants It is vital to understand that the committee, the agenda, the portfolio and the dais preferences from the environment needed for a delegate to function effectively. It is also important to note that a delegate's responsibility is not only just sticking to the beliefs of one's portfolio, but more importantly, focusing on the issue at hand in a way that goes in line with the portfolio's beliefs. To put it in simple words, representing one's portfolio should always come second over solving the problem in an accepted way. Additionally, it's also important to note that delegates also have the responsibility of negotiating, making deals and making important choices on behalf of their portfolio in order to solve the problem in the context of the agenda. And it is here where the delegate should make choices keeping in mind that they represent a set of people with different beliefs. This attitude should also reflect in one's negotiation efforts, especially when negotiating with non-allies or the members of the opposition bloc. A delegate should be clear about the areas that one is willing to compromise on and on areas where one stance needs to be strong irrespective of the opposition and this segregation should be done based on the belief systems and foreign policies of one's portfolios to achieve this a delegate needs to have an environment one is comfortable in especially for the first time delegates as An uncomfortable environment would disconnect the delegate from the committee proceedings and hinder the accuracy of the entire simulation not to mention the possible loss of confidence among the participant and the lack of learning a participant might go through with the selection of the wrong environment 
a prospective delegate, is expected to consider these points very seriously while applying for a conference in order to ensure a great learning experience. Model UN conferences reward such delegates through their reward systems. In our next segment, we will explore a Model UN participation through the lens of a committee dais member and understand the process of becoming one. Thank you.